believe that our Native people were a high culture. Uh, downtown St. Petersburg, I actually grew up uh, going to a school, and the school would have been right out of that type of learning is. I used to find arrowheads uh, on the playground in my school. These are women doing pottery. You see that they're playful, all right? In the Native American world, what you did, the things you did, transferred over to other people. So if you were a mom in your family, right, and you were a grumpy mom, you've been hurt, your feelings have been hurt, and you were angry and you made a meal, what would happen? Boom, right into the meal, right to your family. See? So you really don't want to do that kind of stuff. You really want to give them stuff that's healthy. So these women are making pots. Pots, think of pots. Pots are the thing that holds us, that holds our spirits. We are a vessel, you might say, for our spiritual self. So there's two kinds of points that I, I think I, I need to dismiss the mythology. Here, uh, it's considered a drill. If you drill with it, it just simply breaks apart. It's no good at all. So it's not a drill. So what is it? If you use it as a steak knife, it works perfectly. It's a scalpel. And I think anyway. Uh, this is a typical hammer. Native Americans didn't hammer with a wing hammer. Uh, instead of having a stick coming out there, they can use their hand hammer. Right? You've got a stick with an end hammer. A lot of different kinds of scalpels. You've got the needles, the thread, everything there for surgery. There's evidence that our people did surgical procedures here that are perfect. I mean, when that person came away from that surgery, they healed absolutely. Real quickly, this is some of the stuff that the Mappers have done in making stone tools. A lot of variety of stone tools. What I want to bring your, your minds to is right here in front are two Clovis points. Remember, we talked about the Clovis culture. Uh, when that came to an end, this would be the next one, the red stuff. Redstone, the redstone culture has been defined in the last five years. And so these people knew what they were doing. Their world was as essential to them as yours is to you. They didn't want to do any more work than they had. This is about melting agriculture, the illustration above it. Uh, I think this is one of the most important things that we can learn from them, is they tucked their plants into the environment. They knew how to grow plants together. Uh, the typical one that you hear is corn, beans, and squash. Corn takes nitrogen out of the soil. Beans puts nitrogen into the soil. So what you do is instead of growing corn for three years and ending up with dead soil and then growing beans, they would have planted corn and beans together. The, the beans go right up to corn stalks. You harvest the beans. You harvest the corn. The other thing that goes with it is squash. Uh, squash actually uh, tries to get the insect population away from the corn and the beans. And so everything works together. One of the things you want to notice in this is it's all black because they burn. Right? That puts the nutrition back into the soil. They've left a lot of the dead snags around it. Those dead snags are purchased for uh, hawks. Those hawks do what? Get rid of rats and mice. Isn't that what you want to do when you're growing something? Were these people intelligent? Boom! Tremendously intelligent. 